and director of special needs estate planner private limited and estate planning firm working exclusively with families of children with special needs on will trust and other legal aspects over to you Dendra. thank you and uh, thank you uh, AFA for giving this opportunity and uh, so by straight away begin with the training my presentation You can see my screen, right? We can see your screen, uh, yes, but, yes. but your volume is a little faint. Hai. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's okay now? Yes, much better. Okay. So today's session, uh, we'll understand a bit about special needs uh, financial planning, what it is uh, all about and you know, uh, why uh, financial planning is so important. Uh, five building blocks, uh, that is five areas of financial planning which needs to be addressed for families to be prepared financially and what after us. So uh, we'll try to answer that uh, not much in detail because it requires itself a larger uh, presentation. But we will cover mainly the financial planning aspect today. And uh, when we talk about financial planning, see, uh, as a parent of a special needs child, uh, the biggest concern is you know, where will the child live, what will happen to him, who will manage his affairs. But one of the most important area also is, and the concern also is about the finances. You know, how will you provide for the finances? Even if you have done all the, you know, uh, work, you have prepared well, you know, for his uh, future, but if finances are not there, it will always be a difficult you know, task for his uh, care. So, uh, financial planning is important and financial planning is not something which you can you know uh, plan at the last moment it has to start well ahead in life because you your finances need time to grow your the money needs time to grow and to give it a good time uh, you know and with uh, every one of us we have limited savings from it we have to plan for the future so that's why financial planning is so important so financial life plan for the family is generally involved around three uh, aspects. Plan for parents' own retirement, their own lifetime, planning for special needs child future, and if there is a sibling, then planning for sibling future. Ineffectively, when if I have to say, when you have to plan for a special needs child, as a family, you have to plan for two generations. One for yourself and one for the child. So what exactly uh, is special needs planning? Yeah. Sorry, Jitinder, your voice is not getting good. The participants are also saying it's, they're finding it hard. So if they do it in the mic pass, mein agar kar lein, okay. it's a little okay. bit muffled. It's not very okay. clear. Okay. Thank you. I hope it's, uh, it's fine now. Uh, it's a little bit better. Can it be a little bit louder also? Okay, I'll speak a bit louder then. Okay. I think uh, that will be fine. Thank you. Let me know. So, uh, when we talk about special needs planning, uh, we are talking about. Uh, 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 is, is the voice coming fine? Otherwise, you know, I'll uh, join the voice from the from my mobile. I I think it might be a. Uh, I mean, we try a little bit. It's sounding a little bit muffled. Also, it's not very clear. Let's try, and if if participants feel that. Abhi bhi clear nahi, then maybe we can try a different medium. Abhi jab humne try kiya tha, tab it was sounding absolutely fine. Okay, okay, fair enough. So uh, when we are talking about special needs planning, uh, it's a roadmap to integrate traditional planning with unique requirement of a special needs uh, family. Uh, now, whatever uh, uh, when we talk about uh, the uh, financial planning of any family, uh, then there are traditional uh, requirements, traditional planning. Like, you know, you have to buy a house, you have to buy a car, you know, and uh, if there is a sibling, his education, another. But there is a special needs child, so there is a additional requirement which it comes to the family. So when we are, when you have to plan for the family, then it's, a, it's actually a roadmap where you have to integrate, you have to plan for yourself, you have to plan for sibling, and you have to plan for the special needs child. A future and when you integrate all these plans your financial planning is complete 
it's an effective financial and legal strategy so along with financial there are legal issues that need to be addressed but both have to be in sync with each other so when you draw a financial plan you have to prepare for the legal aspects also and you have to integrate both financial and legal strategy formation of will trust guardianship these are the most important element for a session in time to prepare for the future and one of the important aspect is also that when you draw a financial when you complete your financial plan when you have a comprehensive planning for your child's future you have actually defined your vision also and when you define your vision then you are well prepared not only within your lifetime but for the people who are going to be involved in your child care so let's talk yeah within that i'm just uh bob abibi everybody is finding it hard to understand the voice maybe we can try a different microphone or... one second is my voice clear it sounds clear आप म्यूट पे हैं जितेंद्र ओके नो व्हाट आर दिस फाइव बिल्डिंग ब्लॉक्स जनरली व्हेन यू हैव टू प्लान फॉर द प्लान फॉर द फ्यूचर देन देयर आर फाइव एरियाज व्हिच शुड बी वेल प्रिपेयर्ड एंड एज आई ऑलवेज से दिस फाइव बिल्डिंग ब्लॉक्स बिकॉज़ दीस आर द फाइव पिलर्स ऑन व्हिच योर फैमिली फ्यूचर रेस्ट ऑन द फर्स्ट वन इज प्रिपेयरिंग अ बजट i'll talk about it estimating lifetime care cost setting your goals setting that safety net which will prepare for your uh, child future and retirement planning so these are five building blocks we have to well prepare for but one of the most important question for families is and which they ask you know and which all of you would have that how to start planning how to you know you you all are at a different life stage now how to begin this financial planning where to start from and i for me this chart which you can see this is a life stage chart the different life stages your child will go through uh, his or her lifetime and if you can draw this timeline and uh, understand the life stages you can actually understand the areas you have to plan for the future and with this life stage with this timeline you would be able to know that what are the areas you have to plan for the future for example there is a life stage from minority to adult so there is a life stage of minority when the child is minor so you are working on diagnosis early intervention counseling therapy the moment child moves to adult uh, phase living at home the service support employment guardianship residential need trustees similarly when he moves to external environment and child adaptability residential facilities the financial support and uh, no, a parent's own retirement will come in you know there may there might be change in location similarly first parent death second parent death so this is a timeline we uh, we have drawn now and with this timeline when you look at you can actually understand at what life stage you are and you can prepare well for the future that what is coming up So let's in the building block prepare we all prepare of and uh, you know what is coming in what is our income and uh, you know what are our expenses so we all go for shopping and uh, when we go for a shopping so we prepare that small budget you know what how much money i have in hand what is the amount of expenses happen and what is uh, you know is going to be left with similarly you prepare a family budget now what is our income coming in what uh, expenses you uh, Uh, you are going to incur so how much money you are saving but how do you work out the budget with a special needs child now when there is a special needs child always create a separate budget now why this separate budgeting is important we'll come to know in the second building block we have, we have when we have to identify the lifetime care cost but separate creating a separate budget is most important 
i'll show you what kind of a, a budget i'm talking about this you will find uh, in my website also and uh, this you will find in my book also for the start okay i'll just now this is an excel sheet this is a uh, sheet which is where you are tracking only your special child expenses so if you look at we divided into five heads living expenses house rent utilities if it is there day to day care domestic help driver expenses child personal need food outing clothing accessories inclusive uh, schooling cost transportation clothing any cost coaching book cost for special equipment if at all uh, it is there health needs doctor visit therapy medicine transportation social recreational entertainment telephone vacation any membership miscellaneous any insurance you are uh, you have bought for the child and you are paying a premium so you can see we have actually separate out the expenses for the special child completely and this is the first uh, basic uh, of any personal finance where you understand about your cash flow and you will understand about your child cash flow only when you can separate out the uh, budgeting for, uh, for the child so create a separate budget include all probable expenses uh, whatever expenses are there if you are creating for the uh, budget for the first time so if, suppose if you start today so you would not know me exactly that you know what are the expenses so you are going to start with some assumptions so do that start with some assumptions monitor expenses for few months and you will be nearing an accurate uh, uh, you know expenses uh, you will bring in and accommodate changes in budget with child life stages now as the child grows his life stages the expenses is going to vary so the expenses you have for the child when he is in minority phase the expenses when he moves to an adult phase varies so and that's why it's important that you keep monitoring the special child budget and you can accommodate accommodate these changes and you can work out the finances for them so i'm going to explain how you work out the finances but the first thing is important that if you are managing your expenses managing your family cash flow create a separate budget for the special needs child and that's where we come to the second building block and that estimating lifetime cost now what is this estimating lifetime cost if i <coughs> sorry if i ask any parent that if something happens to you do you know how much money you have to you know leave behind for your child care if you have done that calculation perfect but if not then this estimating lifetime cost is so important because without this it will always you know whatever money you have you will always uh, never come to know that whether that money is adequate or not the child is going to live in residential care the residential care has to be funded with there are other expenses which will come in and the money has to last uh, uh, has to sustain for the child uh, lifetime it can be 25 years it can be 30 years unless and until you have estimated the child lifetime cost it will be very difficult to know that whatever money you have is it going to be enough so let's understand through a simple case study so i'm not going to uh, go in detail but we'll understand with a case study now vicky 10 years old is a special needs child gorav is 45 years wish to estimate what is the corpus required for his lifetime care we assume that vicky life expectancy is going to be near 70 years inflation we assume 7% and let's say the money the corpus you have it grows by 8% now this is vicky expenses now this is where it's important and that's why i said that create a separate budget for the special needs child and this is a separate budget now gorav has very well estimated vicky expenses and uh, living expenses 5000 per month day to day care expenses 10000 per month cost for schooling 10000 per month so total monthly expense 38500 per month gorav is incurring so for gorav estimation he has to start with that today's expenses are 38500 these expenses will grow so what is the money which gorav need in hand today that if something happens to gorav that money can fund vicky's lifetime care expenses 
So Nikki expenses today is 4.62 lakh. His age today is 10 years. We are estimating a, a purpose for 35 years of lifetime. That is, if we assume that Vicky ex life, uh, life expectancy is 70 years, that means Gaurav has to provide for 35 years of lifetime expenses. And with calculation, the total corpus Gaurav needs today is 2.09 CR. Now, why I have done this calculation? Because this is the money Gaurav will be needing if something happens to Gaurav, this is the money which is required for Vicky lifetime care expenses. Now, whether Gaurav have it today, whether Gaurav accumulate tomorrow, that the strategy is going to be planned. But unless and until you know that this is the money I need, the strategies will always be, you know, uh, not be completed. And whether the money is adequate or not, you will never come to know. So that's why estimating the lifetime cost is so important. Now, when Gaurav has estimated this cost, he can buy a life insurance. So suppose he has got a, uh, you know, uh, built a corpus of one CR, be shortfall of one CR. So you can buy a life insurance of one CR, and anytime something happens to Gaurav, that one CR will add on to the surplus which Gaurav has already left behind, and the uh, the corpus would be uh, 2.09 CR. So he will have the required amount of funding for Vicky. So this is most important in your financial planning. Now, whenever you do this estimation, you come to know that whether you know you have adequate money or you do not have an adequate money and then you draw the financial strategies for the future whether you invest the money you grow it you know you prepare uh, for it so the financial strategies can only be drawn when you have estimated this lifetime cost now what are the factors to consider life expectancy can be higher or lower we assume borrow assume 70 years you assume 65 years 60 years or more than that the life expectancy uh, based on that, the corpus will be estimated. Difficult to estimate accurate expenses in early years of life. So expenses will vary. So you might have to monitor it frequently. Inflation for special need member is higher. Uh, I have taken a general inflation of 7%. But whenever there are healthcare expenses, the expenses are going to be higher. You can estimate with the higher inflation. Most investment returns are variable. So today when you look at investment return, that means you have to grow your money there are very less opportunities for high fixed returns. And most investment returns are variable and that's why financial strategies are so important. Financial planning is so important. So that was estimating the lifetime cost. The third building block is how to set your goal. Now, whenever we do any kind of investment and whenever we do you know, financial strategies, whenever we plan, we actually plan it according to our goal. For example, I have to buy a house or you know, I have to start a business after 10 years. So I'll start investing that money and I'll accumulate the money in 10 years so that I have got the adequate amount of money for my business. But how do you set goal for the special need child because the requirement is a lifelong requirement and it's a recurring requirement. So we all measure traditional goal. So for example, short term goal, uh, you know, say buy a car in next two years become a short term goal buy a house in five years become a medium term goal, child education, marriage, retirement, these become a long term goal. If we are say 40, you know, as a 40 years of age, these will be, you know, become a long term goal. So based on the horizon, you can uh, measure your goal. And when you measure your goal this way, you plan out the financial strategy. So if the goal is short term, I'll put the money in fixed deposit. If the goal is long term, I might you know look at some other instrument. If there is a long term, I'll put the money in equities and let my money grow. But how do you do it with special needs child? I think in the similar manner you can do it with the child. Say for immediate expenses, the expenses for next two years, these are short term goals. For expenses up to five to seven years becomes your medium term goal. And expenses beyond seven years becomes a long term goal. So you divide your child expenses, which is going to come up in short term, medium term, and long term. And then you plan out the investment strategy and add up any additional support. For example, if the child is going to live in the house, you might have to do a house modification. You know, it might come up in the next you know, seven to eight years. So it becomes a long term goal. It adds to your long term goal. So that way you bring out the, uh, the, the goals which will come for the child and you Divide it into short term, medium term, and long term, and plan out the financial strategies for accumulating money for your child. 
and how do you do that this timeline is my basis i always you know bring this timeline in front because this is so effective for a special need family that if you can draw this timeline put everything into this you know say for example i talked about modification of house now it is going to come maybe at your retirement stage you want to do it so it come at stage 3 so you know very well you know how much horizon the, uh, your goal has and along with that what all all long term goals are going to come up so with this timeline you can bring these goals very well in your in your practice and you can plan out the strategies to prepare for for them the building block for is retirement planning so crucial we are all all media houses all financial planning experts are talking about retirement planning but retirement planning for a special needs family is is a much uh, uh, i would say you know uh, it's a tougher task because uh, uh, the requirement is much higher retirement planning why it is much higher because these are the four elements which are involved in retirement planning your own retirement you have to live a life uh, when you retire for yourself for you your spouse you have to provide the fund for it there is special need dependent expenses which has to be incurred in your retirement years the residential needs have to be planned where are you going to stay where your child is going to stay are you going to stay along with the child and the last is the savings required what amount of savings you will require for that so when you do your retirement planning include all these four elements and then plan for your retirement years now these are effectively for those people who or those families who are still have got a you know at least 15 years for their retirement uh, their retirement years but what does it include what does retirement planning include include your uh, special need child care plan the cash flow requirement what amount of money you will require the cash flow you will require and generally when we plan for retirement when we do we do not work out the cash flow but this, the way we have planned out for our uh, earning years you have to plan out similarly for our non earning years and that's why uh, you know the cash flow estimation is so important parents caregivers own retirement cash flow your parents own expenses will come up you might have health expenses for you you might have other expenses for you if there is a sibling you will have some other expenses in your retirement year so you have to work out your retirement cash flow other expenses like gifting traveling you might have to travel you know you want would like to gift uh, you know within your uh, family so these expenses will come up there might be health emergency how you going to meet them so all this is an element you need to include when you are thinking of your retirement years so let's about some challenges uh, these are very common challenges we face high dependence on personal saving we are dependent on our personal saving pension provisions are not adequate uh, beyond government pension whatever pension uh, product i would say or a pension provision i would say they are not adequate absence of a good social security we do not have longer life expectancy so life expectancy is increasing you might be thinking that i might live uh, you know uh, up till 75 years i ask a question what if you live till 85 years 90 years where would the fund will you know come from so you need to work out that you need to bring in into your planning that if there is a longer life expectancy how you want to provide for that more options for your time because you were in working years you have spent your life working and now when you are retirement years you will have more time children with special needs have higher medical child raising cost over the long term so all these things are to be addressed <clears throat> what is the process you follow the way you have identified the lifetime care cost for the child the similar way you should identify your uh, call lifetime care cost for retirement years identify today expenses for child uh, identify today expenses for yourself estimate both gender uh, generation expenses at parents retirement identify the corpus need needed evaluate saving options what saving options uh, can be built to accumulate the desired corpus and evaluate probabilities of any shortfall in meeting the retirement goal so i'll explain this through a case study uh, that will make things more clear same case study i took uh, take vicky 10 year old is a special need child gaurav age 45 years now gaurav is to estimate what is the money i need at my retirement year i need money for myself also and i need money for vicky also 
and he is estimating that i retire by the age of 60 years the same calculation we do now here are two charts you can see very well two charts one is the family expenses one is only weekly expense and that's why these are so important that's why i say create a separate uh, you know budgeting for special needs line because you can estimate uh, expenses separately so weekly expenses the same and he has estimated his expenses also that these are going to be my expenses only me and my spouse expenses generally in general our uh, families don't do it because all the expenses are you know uh, uh, within the family so all it comes from the single budget but estimating it separately is important it helps you in identifying that what amount of money needs to be accumulated not only for your lifetime but also what amount of money should be available which will fund your child expenses beyond your lifetime so corpus for weekly at retirement similar calculation i won't go deep into calculation but with this estimation gorav can estimate that he need a 3.6 crr you know in retirement uh, till he retires so at the age of 60 he will need this corpus to fund weekly expenses and he has 15 years of uh, you know lifetime 15 years of uh, for his retirement so he can plan out his savings to build this corpus there is you know uh, if you are a salaried employee there would be employer benefit you can maximize employer benefit because it helps more and second you can uh, bring out investment strategies to accumulate more money at your retirement the second corpus is for wiki for uh, gorav uh, himself okay so he needs 2.5 crore for himself and when you talk about his retirement then gorav will need both these corpuses now how he can plan for these corpuses to accumulate so there are tools through which gorav will plan so he can buy a life insurance not today because life insurance is available till 100 years of age so it has created a you know a good tool for parents to plan out you know the the fund requirement even after your retirement years to life insurance so gorav can plan out those strategies but this my main objective is to help you know that retirement is so critical because there are two uh, generation expenses are involved you need to plan out retirement early in your life so that you can identify the money the corpus should include the special needs child expenses you can you can evaluate the probability there any shortfall and if there are any shortfall you can adjust today cash flow to bridge that gap prepare yourself for more working years uh, that's uh, i think you know all the families understand that they might have to work for more if there is any shortfall in the corpus maximize employer retirement benefit if you have employer retirement benefit maximize it to the fullest you know because it helps like employer provident fund gratuity all these are uh, you know employer benefit which can help you to reduce your savings requirement your personal savings requirement evaluate the support after retirement what is support you are going to get evaluate residential need evaluate probabilities of relocation are you going to relocate after retirement many families do relocate one because the of the requirement of special need child second because of the higher expenses in bigger cities so you need to evaluate probabilities of relocation and if it is going to happen then how you are going to bring out the expenses the last building block is safety net what kind of a safety net you can create so that even after you the special need child care happens and within your lifetime also why i am saying it's a safety net because this is a safety net to help you manage your finances well to help you uh, you know keep your savings intact because these savings are required for yourself and for the special needs child first is the health insurance now after pandemic health insurance has come on the top most priority and the first aspect is you need to cover yourself adequately employer insurance may not be enough and it will be available till you are employed so don't depend on employer insurance insurance for special need children has started now it was it was not available before i'll come to this how you know uh, things are moving if viable create a health fund always have a health fund though you will have health insurance but do not completely depend on it 
always create a health fund. Now, what has changed in health insurance? Well, uh, where you know the uh, health insurance for special needs children is available. This first October 2020, there was a mandate which came where uh, IIDA has uh, you know issued a list of treatment that needs to be mandatorily covered by all insurers, thereby increasing the scope of coverage of health insurance policies. Behavior, neurodevelopment disorders, genetic diseases and disorders have been included now. So IRDA, the regulator, has made a change where post-2020, they have denied companies to exclude health insurance based on disability. And they have to provide health insurance for behavior, neurodevelopment disorders, genetic diseases and disorders. And uh, you know, so the most of disabilities are going to be covered by health insurance. We are seeing that change where health insurance companies have started covering special needs children also. And as I say, it may take some, some time. The government policies are always you know, uh, difficult to implement within a short span of time. But we are seeing that change and I am seeing health insurance companies coming forward. The best thing is that they cannot say no. You go to a health insurance say, my child is a special child, will you cover? Health insurance company can't say no that he has autism or he has cerebral palsy, so we won't cover. They have to cover, they have to or specify the reason. But the clear mandate is they can't say no to health insurance just based on the disability. So that's a good thing which, which has happened. Now coming to life insurance. Now most of us look at a life insurance policy you know, or when we buy a life insurance, we look at a savings element. But here I'm talking about life insurance purely from the view of safety net. A safety net which can help you, you know, bridge the gap which is there in your finances to provide for your special need child care. Now, identify your actual financial requirement. Whenever you buy a life insurance, identify what is your actual requirement. Should cover child lifetime care costs. Like Gaurav from the case study. As I said, Gaurav, if you... If, uh, he needs a two CR corpus for a VC. Now he has only one CR built up. Where will this additional money come from? So Gaurav can buy a life insurance of one CR and can provide for the child, special needs child care or wiki care after his lifetime. Both parents, you know, need life insurance cover. Whether you are working or not, but when you have a special needs child, both parents' uh, life insurance is important. And I'm talking about only risk cover, only term insurance, no other insurance policy, because I'm here talking about building a safety net and safety net with a lesser premium outgo, with a lesser you know, hit on your pocket. And that only term insurance gives you. Specific policies not available today. There are no specific policies available for special needs uh, children's family. And it becomes an important estate for instant funding. I'm always, you know, vocal about how would you provide for this instant funding? Something happens to, you know, parents. Where would this instant money come from which you need? Something happens to Gaurav, where will this 2CR come from? Life insurance is such an important tool for that instant funding. And every parent should buy it because it can bridge a huge gap which might be there for providing for your special needs child financing. So how do you identify uh, coverage? Now, these are the elements when you so look at the checklist you have to take when you are buying a life insurance. Emergency reserves, paying off loans and liabilities, you know, cover legal expenses, generate a lifetime income, meet month-on-month -month living expenses, child lifetime care. There might be, you know, uh, say, uh, fees for guardianship, legal and other professionals such as trustees any additional expenses. Now, this might be an immediate corpus. When I say immediate corpus, that means just at your lifetime, uh, you know, after your lifetime. So there are future requirements. You have a child care for older age of surviving spouse. You know, you will also get old. You might reach a you know, stage where your physical uh, health won't allow. So then how you are going to manage? Plus, who will manage your affair also when you reach your older age? You know, so you have to look at that. Retirement expenses for surviving spouse. If sibling and expenses for his her education and marriage. This is a checklist for buying a life insurance. Not just that you buy a life insurance of you know two lakhs and pay a premium and there's something you will get in return. But no, this is a safety net you are creating. It is I am not there till my family goals will be met. So look at 
at the right amount of coverage when you are buying the life insurance. <laughs> investment planning. How do you do investment then? We have worked out a goal. You know how do you plan out your goal for special needs child? But investment planning also be has to be well thought out the uh, exercise. It's not that you know you just look at an investment product you know and you just buy an investment product. But do you know whether it's going to meet your requirement or not? And how best you can plan your investment. Now one of the strategies which we have implemented with families and which has been very helpful is bucketing strategy. Now you have bucket. What you do, you divide all your goals into different buckets, especially your special needs child goals. Bucket one will meet your next two years expenses. Bucket two will meet expenses for next three to five years. Bucket three will meet your income requirement for post six years and up to ten years of life. You know, bucket four will meet income requirement post ten years. Bucket five is in you know for any unexpected, unexpected or emergency. Now, what does it do? When you create these different buckets of investment, uh, you actually plan your investment well. Because, for example, bucket one is next two year expenses. Forget about any return or anything. It has to be a liquid money, so you can put into a uh, fixed deposit or a bank. Bucket three or bucket four is a long term investment. So then you need, you will plan out for growing that money instead of putting into a into a you know non earning uh, investment. So you can plan out your investment strategies well, even with a special needs child. When you create this, this uh, different bucket, and add, keep adding on bucket for whatever goals you have, and align it with your uh, investment strategy. The so lastly is what after us. I am not going to go very much in detail because it requires, but still. I'll answer. What are the tools of estate plan when you are answering what after us, will, living will, trust, guardianship, and letter of intent? Vision. A letter of intent is a vision. Uh, to make it simple, let me you know ask a question that suppose you are leaving your child to a neighbor for uh, two hours. You can verbal instruction. You can give you know please don't do this. You know this is the way he has to be managed. Increase it to forty-eight hours. Still, you can give verbal instruction. But what about for lifetime? Can you give a verbal instruction? No. You need a document. You need a document which can be provided to the next legal guardian, trustees, people involved, which can help them know about your child and how the child care has to be managed. Letter of intent is that document. It is about you know you write it about family, the living, the residential needs. Healthcare, what has worked, what has not worked, so that you can put it out. Please don't do this. Don't you know uh, give this medicine or don't you know uh, work on this therapy. Social activities, what is interest, like dislike, education, religious, and the final arrangement. So you creating a vision. You are creating a document which, if it gives, is given to the next uh, legal guardian or anybody else, they would understand more about your child and they would be you know. Able to make efficient decision for your child. Now we're talking about uh, what after us. So we have four estate planning options. Either we distribute assets to sibling or family member who will look after the child care, or we give equity asset to uh, the child itself and it will be managed by the uh, guardian. Establish a family trust or a private trust and dis or distribute asset to the residential living center. We have these four options. For the you know the financial affairs, and we have to evaluate all these four options and look at what is the best which suits my uh, you know for my child here, and we choose accordingly. So to just to uh, give you a picture, wh what is an estate plan? You know, so for Vijay Shekhar estate plan, we have worked out. You know, we have identified he has to work on living arrangement. You know. Whether it's going to be home or whether it's going to be an institution, if it has home, you know, then whether he need to purchase or you know what is the cost of stay is going to be there in the home. If it's an institution, what is the cost of stay? The shift, the child is going to be shift now or later. So all these things have to be understand and also have to be worked out. Legal guardianship. Who is the legal guardian after your lifetime? Is he capable you know, enough of managing all the affairs? Right. <laughs> who are all the people? Who can be appointed a legal guardian? 
writing a will so when you are writing a will how the asset will be distributed will it go to your wife or you know the after that to the child or will it go directly to the child or will it go to the trust you know so you will have to write a will understand these legal aspects cannot be addressed unless and until you have this legal document in place if you don't write a will the assets won't go to the trust form a trust you know so who is going to, if you are forming a trust who is going to the with the trustees what is going to be the structure how the trust is going to fund the expenses and the letter of intent so when you have all these elements in place then your estate plan is completed and then you draft all these legal documents and bring in place so first you need to plan out what all i need how things are going to happen in you know, in each of these affairs and then you work out a good estate plan for you for your family and most important for the special needs child care so guardianship just in a brief uh, the law says you know that you are an actual guardian till 18 years of age after that parents have to take a uh, guardianship and uh, who is going to be the next guardian after you that is the most important decision and when you are appointing somebody answer these questions do you wish to have a separate guardian for personal financial affairs is your identify guardian aware of his child needs does he know that he will have to bring the change in his life because he is going to be managing a special needs child affairs have you considered the identify guardian as a guardian for sibling also where will the child live once the guardian takes your role if the guardian is from the different city will the child live or will this be the guardian going to travel to the child uh, place how things are going to be managed how guardian will be paid for the cost they incur while managing your child affairs and if he is your family member friend or relative then how is the child comfortable okay i am not going to go into these detail uh, of will trust because this requires a completely separate uh, you know workshop longer workshop uh, there is lot many things to cover but to give you uh, just a uh, you know framework that when you are planning for your child future and when you have legal documents in place you have to create an ecosystem you have created a trust you have right written a will you have appointed a guardian uh, there is a residential care unless and until all these people are in sync with each other it is going to be difficult the decision making is not going to be so efficient and that's why an ecosystem has to be created an ecosystem where all the child uh, care is being monitored on a regular basis and that and uh, that child care is being uh, shared with all the people who are involved and they are in constant discussion with each other understanding the child requirement the change is coming in and the financial also is known to everyone so an ecosystem where uh, uh, you know generally we create a private trust become the central point and a private trust bring out all the support they, they set up contract with institution with guardian with all the people who are involved in the child care and set up a monitoring process so always think of bringing this ecosystem in place so that tomorrow when you are not there whoever are involved in your child care are in sync with each other and your child care is being monitored periodically accessible to all and the person who is going to be mostly involved or the decision maker knows very well what's happening with the child care okay this is uh, all about so create a special financial plan have the financial plan in place have the estate plan in place select your special dream team why i am why i am talking a team you need a financial planner you need estate planner you need medical professionals uh, you need other people so create that team so that you can put things in place but always remember that you have to plan for yourself also then only you will be able to take care of your child okay so that's uh, all about uh, financial planning and plan special needs is an uh, organization through which we handle the financial planning aspect and special needs estate planners uh, private limited handles the legal aspect you can find lot of resources at our website uh, letter of intent e course 
self assessment you can do a self assessment understand you know how much you are prepared there is a calculator we have built so the calculation which i have showed of identifying the corpus if any parent just wants to understand you know the about uh, this they can go to this calculator have the input uh, you know give the input uh, you know work out the numbers and the calculator will show you the corpus which you need today for managing the or for funding for the child care so we have built this calculator now so we have been doing financial planning we have been doing estate planning we manage assets also and we have also launched professional trusteeship services where our organization so even if you have formed the trust you are not ident uh, not able to identify trustees you can always appoint professional trustees and our organization is ready to act as a trustee and can manage the uh, trust affairs for the child so that's all about uh, financial planning and uh, just to introduce uh, uh, you know we are uh, slowly and slowly we are also uh, organizing larger format of workshop you know where we can discuss most of the things in detail so today i have been discuss about trust will and other aspects but we are you know conducting workshops where you know physical workshops we are doing where we are going to bring out these aspects much more in detail so these workshops are two to three hours of format so you can always look forward to it now i am happy to answer any questions uh, we have thank you mr jitendra solanki for inspiring and encouraging all of us with a session on money matters financial planning for people on the spectrum now we are uh, ready to take the questions uh, dhruv juneja is dhruv juneja there he has a question yes please you can ask the question dhruv uh thank you uh, so i am a sister who is a special child i just need to understand uh, if you can help me a bit more to which uh, medical policy that we can seek out as you mentioned that there is no policy available today so should we go for regular policy and not mention anything about special needs <clears throat> no <clears throat> i think first of all if you have got a child with special need you know about the disability don't you know hide it disclose it and let the company decide where they can offer you uh, you know uh, the policy the the change in the mandate is that the company cannot deny a policy based on the disability so if you disclose it and company said no we won't cover you know special need child because you know he has or she has got a disability that cannot happen now you know if companies are doing it my take is please take everything in writing and i am 100% sure companies will be scared to give you in this writing because there is a clear mandate now based on disability if he has autism and there are specific policies for autism today the star had said got a one policy religiar care uh, it used to be religiar but care has got a specific policy for autism now so if company has got a specific policy fine but the larger mandate is a company cannot say no directly just because you know child has got a disability they have to cover and i think if you go uh, you know apply to the companies now uh, my experience is that companies are you know starting uh, you know to cover special need children uh, specific for autism there are specific policies for autism so you can look those policies you know for your child if the child disability is autism <clears throat> well uh, thank you we'll thank try you again. very much thank you and, uh, we have a question from siddharth chandra <clears throat> siddharth yes. you may ask the question hello ji we can hear hello. you ji yeah hi uh, i have a question okay. uh, my son uh, my son is uh, is of the spectrum and what i want to know is when he uh, attains the age of majority uh, can he can he if you can he make any legal transactions for example can he uh, draw a check 
or sign any you know documents will they be a legal tender will they be considered legally as uh, as a valid documents okay see uh, once the child is an adult as per law once the once you reach your adult phase you can take your own decision okay you can sign a check you can withdraw amount you can open a bank account you can do everything individually now it's you who have to decide whether the child need a support you know if you say you know he can do everything uh, you know he can uh, take decision first of all think from this aspect whether he can take money making decision whether he can take decision about money so for example he has you know uh, 50000 rupees can he take decisions you know that where to spend this money how much to save you know like the decision you make if he cannot then avoid that process you know to give him the, all the you know decision making then he will need a support you will have to take a decision on his behalf the moment it comes to a situation where you have to take a decision on his behalf i think then the, you know it will be difficult you know for, for him or you know or giving that uh, responsibility to him to you know sign the check or you know withdraw an amount or prepare any legal document so it all you know uh, comes to the you know the amount of disability the percentage of disability within that what kind of a decision he can make i am not saying you know he cannot make but you have to decide whether he can make those decisions or not if not then probably you will have to avoid yeah, my, my question uh, there's, there's a yeah. part of uh, part of that yeah. like for example for example if, if i say like uh, if he makes a uh, said decision Mm. Right, and he signs the document. Say, for example, mm. he uh, he signs the check. Mm. Right. So, mm. uh, considering his disability, right, yeah. will it be considered legally? Is will it be considered mm. as as valid <clears throat> by court of law? No. First, first of all, does he have does he have a bank account? If he does, if he does, then no. If he if he if he is a if he has a bank account as an individual, <clears throat> you know that means he is uh, legally he is. Uh, able to take decisions and uh, bank cannot say no to any check so the point this is the point i am trying to you know make it that when you open a bank account for your child you know who's on the spectrum there are two ways one you open a bank account like yours which means the way you are you know free to take your decisions you can sign check you know you can uh, cut check to anybody you can do all decisions similar way he is free to take all that decision okay but whether he can take the decision or not you have to decide on the basis of that you will open the bank account accordingly if he need support in money making decisions then it, you know you will not open an account individually you know on his name you will open an account under guardian okay so legally if he has got a bank account individual like you he is very well rate you know take any decision he can sign the check but if it is an account under guardianship then you are going to take all the decisions so you have to decide you know which bank account he needs all right thank you thank you very much uh, the next one is prerna sachwani yeah prerna. Uh, hi yeah uh, hello can you hear me yeah yes, yeah yes. yeah, yeah. yeah uh, jiten sir actually i am in germany okay mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. i have a question regarding guardianship because yes. here what mm -hmm. happens when a kid when a disabled kid becomes 18 years old mm -hmm. you have to take the guardianship from the court okay yes. Uh, yes. like parents and they will give it for 7 years and yes. then again you have to reapply it yes. so uh, the thing is that they are opposing this rule i don't know whether they will put it down or not but i i just wanted to know how it is in india like india also okay. we have to take it from court or or it is automatically in our hands like no i think you know um, more or less uh, as far as this uh, legal guardianship rule are concerned we are you know very well in sync with uk law so similarly in india also once the child reaches a once the child reaches an 18 years of age uh, then you all parent have to seek a legal guardianship from the court now in india in india you don't have to you know go to the court you have the national trust where you can apply for the legal guardianship but unlike you can it is not for 7 years once you are appointed a legal guardian you are appointed a legal guardian for the lifetime that's the only change with respect to uk otherwise here also parent have to take a legal guardianship 
Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, sir. We have one more question from Isha Nehru. Isha, you can ask your question. Thank you so much. Uh, sir, with respect to the insurance policy, when you have an employer policy which is given by the employer, do yes. we have to uh, disclose or uh, disclose the uh, uh, the child being on spectrum for those policies as well because typically they just ask for the dependents details just the name and the uh, uh -huh. date of birth so I've uh -huh. never filled out a form so that's why I wanted to understand how do you disclose this information so ideally you should disclose it you know so that because uh, you know in in employer insurance also uh, uh, you know uh, expenses uh, are covered you know, even special needs children I have seen are covered, but you should disclose it because tomorrow if any expenses come to, you know, uh, related to child disability and if they are not covering it, you know, you won't be able to know at, you know, in the first instance. You know, tomorrow the company says no that, uh, you know, probably you will be at a disadvantage. So I would say whenever you are taking a policy or whenever you are, you know, having a group insurance, always disclose your child disability. You can always ask, you know, your uh, the insurance company guy, you know, and he should tell you. But my take is whatever they say, don't you know uh, rely on the verbal communication. Always take it in writing. Okay, but do disclose the child disability. Okay, sir. And sir, just one thing that you mentioned yeah. about the uh, workshop that you intend to conduct, which is a detailed yes. one for um, for will and trust, etc. Do mm -hmm. Is, yeah. there, is there a way where we can get the details of that workshop? Yes, I'll share the details, you know, uh, with AFA uh, also, and they can share it with you. And uh, we are conducting a workshop in uh, Gurgaon next week. Uh, uh, you know, on Sunday, we are conducting a workshop for the private trust. Will It's a two and a half hour workshop. Okay, so we can share the details. Or you can, you can go to our website also, plus you can connect me to Facebook. So the information is available. Thank you so much, sir. Thanks. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, we have one more question from Mamta. Mamta, you can ask your question. Hi, sir. Uh, I'm sorry yeah. I couldn't hear the entire uh, webinar because I was alone with my child. Maybe I'm asking some question which has been answered. Uh, yeah. I want to know if there's some insurance uh, company which covers the therapies of our children, uh, speech therapy, occupational therapy and all. Okay. See, largely therapies are not covered because, uh, you know, OPDs are very high expenses for companies. Yes, Star Health has a policy where they are covering it, but I think the limit is around 1500 per year. So it's a very, very nominal amount. Otherwise, most companies are not covering these regular expenses. Okay. 1500 per year? Per year. And that's actually a joke for us, no? They are making See, a joke of us practically. No. I do, and I do know, you know, they just came out of policy, you know, for autism and they giving this benefit, mm -hmm. but uh, it's a very negligible benefit, you know, not mm -hmm. to be considered. And uh, the largely is because these OPD expenses, you know, we call it OPD expenses. Yes, sir. The premiums are way too high. Okay. If mm -hmm. the companies come out with these expenses, the premium will just shoot up, you know. Yeah. And the paramedical so, treatment also would be under OPD expenses because you cannot show the child is admitted for that, no? Yes, 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 yes. And yeah. open, because see, they, these things have happened, you know, uh, eight, ten years back where companies came out with OPD policies. And, you know, mm -hmm. almost all companies came out with, and the policies were like for a 25,000 policy, the premium was itself 25,000. Okay. okay. So, so these are too costly, and that's why companies are not coming out with a claim for these regular expenses. They are not covering. As of now, they are not covered. Okay. So, do you suggest, have you suggested some particular insurance good for our kids? All in all. So, if it is autism, if it is autism, you have got specific policy. Star Health has spoken about. There is a policy from Care also. Okay. So, Care yeah. Insurance has yeah, Care Insurance has got a policy for autism, where they are covering you know special children who have got autism. They are covering them in that policy, and you can get a higher coverage than Star Health. So I think uh, one of the parents got a coverage of around five to ten lakh in that policy. Uh, in one year, sir. I mean, uh, uh, the policy coverage, yes, you can get a, uh, okay. at least 5 lakh coverage in that policy. Okay, sir. It is AIRAR. -R. No, care, care, C A R E. 
C A R U. Okay, care. Yeah. Right. Got yeah. It, so care, care. You won't find this specific policy. Now, care. I've got a policy for uh, pre-existing illness, specifically for diabetes. Okay. Under okay. that only, they have covered the autism. So, how can we get it? If I want to get it, sir. Okay. Ah, uh, what I'll do is I'll share the details. Okay. I'll share okay. the details, and uh, you know, uh, and probably you know from AFA, then you can get that information. Okay, I'll share the details of the specific product. Yeah, please. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And uh, we we have one more question from Sunil. Sunil, if you are there. Hello, sir. Thank you for the uh, this talk actually. And uh, my question is, uh, I I live in Bangalore actually. Do you have any branch here or uh, or workshop uh, or something like that, or um, do you have an online facility? I do have online. Workshop? I do have online facility, and uh, I am consulting parent not even in India. You know, abroad also. So online there is no problem as far okay. as Bangalore is concerned. Yes, Bangalore is in my cards, you know, for conducting a workshop. I do not know when, but this year certainly I'll be conducting a workshop in Bangalore also. So, how can we connect in future? Actually, if, if I am interested in that. So, you know, any any of the parents who wants to connect to me, just leave your email ID at uh, you know. I'll give my uh, contact detail. I'll share the details here. Just uh, you know, share your email ID. You know, I'll put into my communication list, and whenever there is a workshop, whichever place. You will get a notification for that. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. One more question we have from Sashi Bagel. Sashi, yeah. you can ask your question. Uh, hi, good evening, everyone. Uh, see, I just had a question with the guardianship thing. Like, yeah. I do understand that in India, after you turn 18, banks generally don't allow the parents to operate the account on behalf of the minor child. Okay, so like, huh. okay, uh, the parent can apply to the court. I, just in case of an emergency, like, do we have a provision that, like, I apply for guardianship for my child, and I can also yes. indicate in case something happens to both of us, like me and my husband, automatically yes. the guardianship can transfer to my, like, my other kid or my other relative. Is there a provision? Because, you know, I have seen it across, like, there at times it's so difficult to... Like if the parent is not there, all of a sudden. So it becomes mm -hmm. difficult for the other relative or the sibling to go to mm. the court and to the banks to settle these matters. Mm. See, uh, you know, see, understand one thing, legal issues cannot happen automatically unless and until you have the legal documentation in place. Okay. So okay. If, if there is this, the case of guardianship, the process is, you know, uh, you don't have to go to court directly. The National Trust is there. You can always apply to the National Trust. If there is an emergency, the mm -hmm. situation comes in where, you know, the parents have gone and there is no one to care for the child. You mm -hmm. can always file a petition in the court with an emergency. I think the court can hear it, you know, considering the emergency situation and they can always, uh, you know, uh, do it on a fast track uh, today. So that is available. But... Without legal documentation, guardianship won't be available. Okay. So, like, I cannot give, uh, like, up, like there's nothing, like, where I can mention, like, if we, both of us are not there, then the uh, guardianship of the no, child. Sorry. Ask... sorry. If you are asking that, you can, you mention in the will. The will Achha. is a legal document. If you mention any particular individual to take the legal guardianship, that person through will, you know, uh, is legally appointed as a legal guardian he will have to just do one thing he will have to just probably give that copy of the will to the national trust and they will give him the legal guardianship certificate so he won't have to go through the process of applying for the legal guardian okay so that is a much faster process yes yes after your lifetime you can always you know i mean always have uh, your uh, will written there and appointing a legal guardian after so that's that. like an easier process like i can keep my will mm -hmm. ready and in case of emergency the other person has easier access to whatever funds i have, I have in my child's name so once once he is uh, you know uh, he's given a legal guardianship certificate mm -hmm. he will have access to all the funds all right and i just one more questions like uh, we do invest okay every parent yeah. especially with a special needs child do invest so yes. right now, me and my husband are investing our, in our names and putting yes. our kids as a, as a nominee. Like for yes. my daughter, mm -hmm. she is normal. So we do invest in her name. 
but for yeah. my son we are little reluctant to put in his name because we have seen issues where you have issues with the settlements of the claims like right. even for policy which get matured so what do right. you suggest putting him as a nominee yeah like it is advisable to put the funds in his name and we act as a guardian hmm. or it's better to put the uh, the funds in our name and put him as a nominee no Which you can See, whichever way, whichever way you do it, after your lifetime, the funds are going to the child. They will be managed by the legal guard. Okay. Yeah. Whether yeah. the funds are in his name or whether the funds are in your name, even if it's in your name, after your lifetime, it will go to your child. Yeah. Right. You know, so they will be transferred to his name. Okay. So the, the situation won't change. The point is, you know, that the the funds are in his name whether they should be managed by the legal guardian or you want a you know an entity which can manage you know the same funds as i'm talking about a private trust the fund can mm -hmm. go to a private trust not to the child and the private trust can manage the child affair you know okay. so the so the continuity can be there so the, it's not about you know the funds going in the child name it's about the legal guardian like how it has to be managed after our lifetime. Yeah, the way you are managing within your lifetime, similarly way the legal guardian will be managed. The legal guardian will manage after your lifetime. Okay. All right. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> and I... you are on mute. Thank you very much, sir. We have one more question from Anandita. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Sir, I have a question that uh, uh, rather say I want a suggestion from you. There are yeah. so many term policies and uh, health insurance policies available in the market and hmm. we get confused where should I go for term insurance. Please suggest hmm. one or two names. Where should I go for term insurance and poly, uh, health insurance? Okay. Health insurance you're talking about yourself? No, not no for my uh, child. Okay, and he is on the uh, office. Sir, we have a national uh, insurance policy for Medicrim for my family, my me, my husband, and my baby. Uh huh. No, so if you are talking about health insurance specifically for the child, and if yeah. it is an autism spectrum, then the policies that you can go to either Star Health or you can go to Care. Care okay. and Star, Star Health. Yes, Care and Star Health, they both have the policy for autism. And as far as I know, some other companies like United India Insurance, you know, is also covering children with autism. Right. See, okay. one thing is for sure that no company can deny a policy today just based on the disability. Okay, that cannot happen now. Right. So yeah. they will have to give some coverage, you know, to the child. Right. Or they will give you an if, you know, and if it does happen when the company, you know, uh, write it down, uh, then always ask for a very specific reason, you know, that, uh, that why it has been rejected. But you are looking for specific policy, you can go toward these two companies. For term insurance, uh, you know, SDFC, ICICI, Max Life Insurance, uh, I think, you know, these are the three companies you can look at. One is uh, HDFC, then uh, please. HDFC, ICICI, or Max Life Insurance, so you can look Max at life. any of these three companies. Okay, sir. okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, thank you, sir. We have one more question from Rajiv Kumar. Yeah. Sir Rajiv. Yeah, hi. Good evening. Uh, yeah, thank you for the session. Uh, so, my question is basically that, you know, you talked about health insurance. So, we have our health insurance, which we have taken from Max. And this yeah. is a family flow, family floater plan. So, you know, there no nowhere it is mentioned that they know the child is on a spectrum or we have not disclosed it also. As you said that, you know, no company mm. can deny in today's, uh, you know, scenario. Yes. Yes. So, so now what do you suggest? Should we go and again uh, disclose this or how is it? Because, you know, we when, have been... When, when, when did you bought the policy? I mean, when the, the child disability was diagnosed or before that? No, so uh, I think, you know, after that. After that. So that means at the time of taking insurance, you haven't disclosed the child disability, right? No, but it was never asked, never asked from, by the insurance company. No, insurance company, generally in their forms, they have got a column, okay? 
and in the column they have that question where you have to mention you know any kind of illness or something pre existing illness something like so that pre pre existing illness is fine but you know there is no where it is mentioned that autism and you know spectrum and one see see uh, understand insurance companies does not ask you know specifically whether it is a, you have any autism cerebral palsy no they will just ask whether there is any pre existing illness autism if the if you So you know, from an indian perspective the word is disability if there is any kind of disability it is covered under pre existing illness okay so you have to mention it under pre existing illness generally agents don't tell you that okay that's the sad part but you have to mention there so, so what do you has, suggest now i think you should write it to the company saying you know that my child is covered but he has got disability so and so and let the company decide my take is they won't say complete blunt no they cannot do that you know saying that the child has disability so we can't cover as i said this 2020 mandate is there and you can go to ird and search for that circular and you can read it in detail company cannot exclude the child because of the disability understood but i am not seeking for anything which is to do with autism treatment i am basically taken this insurance for any general treatment i do agree see i do agree rajiv but what happens is you know previously companies were not covering at all so if there is a disability company said no you know we won't cover right but now companies are covering you know with specific either specific coverage or in general health policy so it was it was a question whether the uh, child was covered at all or not previously when you have taken the policy the if anybody has child has got autism cerebral palsy you know or any other disability they were not covered at all they were not offered health insurance so it's a question that when the health insurance was not offered you know you got a health insurance for your child so it's mm-hmm. it's, it's but to that condition okay okay but from october 2020 onwards you were saying that all these companies iidi has already given them a you know yes, a notification yes i have given that mandate and uh, any of you who would like to know that circular you just write me down i'll send you the details of that circular and you know can all with the reference of that circular you can always ask the insurance company please provide the detail See, there is okay. a circular where insurance company says that whatever is the reason of rejection, the company has to clearly state the details of that rejection. Company can't just say that it's a medical underwriting and rejection. You have to mention what kind of a medical underwriting. Understood. Understood. Okay. Understood. Fine. Fine. Thank you so much. I have already shared my email address, so if you can just send that notification, that will help. I'll I'll send I'll send that notification. In fact, I'll send that notification to AFA also, and they can share it with parents so that parents are aware that. these things are yeah. there in health insurance yeah yeah thank you so much thank you thanks a lot thank you very much sir we have one more question from dr sk shrivastava yeah Hi, Mr. Uh, Jitan. Um, I'm from Bhopal. Uh, uh, I have one uh, question. That uh, uh, just uh, two, three years back, I took a uh, uh, health uh, coverage policy, Mediclaim, uh, for yeah. my family. And uh, at that time, uh, insurance guy has uh, refused to uh, give uh, insurance insurance cover to my autistic uh, son. He was at that time he was around 19 years old. Uh, mm-hmm. now uh, now i i wanted to uh, just uh, add him as a entry uh, uh, to the, that policy is it possible now yes it is possible now if you go to the insurance company as i said you know when there is a mandate that insurance company cannot exclude you know uh, some the disorders uh, yeah. you know, they cannot exclude you know, so they can't say no completely to you know that we won't give health insurance because of this medical condition you know, they can't cannot say that You know, but I think you know uh, there are two ways. You can also look for the specific policy, also which I mentioned, and you know get a separate insurance for your child. Okay, that that is a uh, very different from uh, that will uh, very different from this policy, or it will no, be included. Not much of difference. Not much of difference. It's just that there are some limitations of some kind of surgery. You know, some uh, any kind of medical uh, something coming to related to autism. So. There are certain limitations in that, but I think it's a very quite effective policy. You can think. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Jitin, uh, Mr. Jitendra Solanki, and thank you everyone for joining us today. We look forward to have you all again in our upcoming sessions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.